Saucy. Saucy. Right. Um, and, well, but I mean, I'm talking about like who he wants to match up against Nashville centers. Um, and I, I do think that he wants to deepen out the, the, line, the lines. And, um, you know, I do think that he wasn't exactly enamored with Cunning as second line center or Donato at second line center. I mean, the Wild have an issue there. I mean, you know, center wise, this team is not very deep. Um, you know, they don't, they don't have a true number one center on this team. You know, at this point, they really, you know, it's like three number threes being kind, maybe. Um, so it, you know, it, it's an issue. <laughs> you, you mentioned Mike Madonna. I mean, you know, I remember the 99 Dallas Stars team and that centers on that team that won a cup. I mean, it was like Madonna, Neuendijk, Arnott. I can't remember who the other center was. But, I mean, it was like just like, holy mackerel. <laughs> You know, three, three number one centers on that team. Um, you know that's how you win, and so that's that's an issue on this team, which is why a lot of people are going out there and saying Billy Guerin's aggressively going after number two center. It's it's not that they know this; it's that they're looking at this team and saying, "Well, there, where's the hole?" That's where it is. It obviously is. So, okay, thanks. Yeah. Of course, one quick uh, one comment on Granlin. I'm happy to see he'll be. It looks like he'll be playing with Duchesne and Forsberg at yeah. least for the first game. So anxious. I'm sure, to see he's how happy he in a contract year. Yeah, yeah. yeah I he, mean that that one touch pass that he made the other day to it was Duchesne to Granlin to. I forget. I don't know. I don't think it was Forsberg. It might have been, but uh, that was a great play or by Johansson. Gra- by Granlin. Uh, yeah, I think it might have been Johansson. Um, that was a great play in a contract year. If he's playing with them, he might get his eight million. <laughs> Yeah, although so. I listened to some the, the podcast, Nashville's podcast, and they said he, if he plays good this season, he'll price himself out of a contract with them. They've yeah, got, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, you know as well as I do, one guy that would take him back right this second. You know. Yep, Coach B, for yep, sure. Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Enjoy Nashville. Uh-huh, yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks for driving up. <laughs> I'm going to probably not give you Grandlet's cell phone number. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for uh, taking my question. I saw on the interwebs today that uh, Kaprizov scored another hat trick. Yeah, second. Is he the real deal, and will his talent uh, translate well in the NHL? I think it will. I mean, those goals today, that's not just like, that's like, uh, you know, look, obviously the cynics are all going to say, well, it's the KHL, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But look at that goal, the third goal specifically today. I mean, that is, that's the way he throws that guy off, his burst of speed, his anticipation of flying through the, the middle of the ice to get that puck. This kid's unbelievably talented, unbelievably talented. Now, will that translate immediately here to being, you know, a 40 goal? Uh, who knows? I mean, he's going to have to develop. It's going to be a culture shock. You know, Vicky just talked about what it's like to be in the middle of, of the red square and seeing security everywhere. I mean, just imagine now this Russian player that knows, barely knows English, although he's taking English lessons, apparently, you know, coming here for the first time, knowing nobody. I mean, that, that stuff's not easy. I mean, just imagine if one of us went over and decided to go play in the middle of Russia, you know. One day I want us to do, a, actually I should do a story, is uh, John Blum, who used to play for the Minnesota Wild. He played, in, I think he's in the Finnish Elite League or Swedish Elite League now, but for years after playing here in Minnesota, he went over there. And I think he's played in All-Star games with Carell as well. So one day I've got to get him on the horn and do that story. Think about whether you want to tackle another topic or take Twitter questions next. Uh, let me quickly thank Tony Hoagland. Uh, I want to make sure I get the deal right. Tony is sponsoring three shows on the network, and he's offering charitable donations. Basically, for this show, if you call up and mention the Russo Suhan show, he will donate $16 to the Zucker Give 16 campaign. And uh, you can also check out Tony's stuff at champlininsurance.com. Hi, Talk North listeners. I wanted to let you all know about State Farm's new program called Quotes for Good. We partner with local nonprofits to raise money for great causes. For the Russo Suhan Show, I'll be donating $16 to the Jason and Carly Zucker Give 16 campaign that benefits the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital. When you call in, be sure to mention the show so that we can track the donations. You can reach us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at champlininsurance.com. I was just, yes, sorry. sir. I was thinking about a Zucker story. Uh, so a while back, you'd been asked, or recently you'd been asked the question about which was the arena that was easiest to travel into and out of, which got me thinking, uh, a buddy of mine and I, we've seen an NHL game in 26 arenas now. No way. And yeah, we're, hopefully we'll hit out a few more this, uh, this winter. 
But it got me to thinking about the question of who's got the best game day ops, like the opening sequence mm-hmm. in the re- because I'll admit, while I love the X as a building, it so far he and I agree that it's been probably the most boring mm-hmm. in day in game operations that we've seen of all the twenty six arenas we've been to. Yeah. Um I know that I haven't. I don't know what they're doing. I know they are revamping it a little bit this year. I was talking to Mitch Helgeson, their, one of their Veeps, um, a couple of weeks ago for a story that I'm writing before the home opener. Some of the things that they're doing to spice things up, and um, and also the broadcasts, uh, as you could, as I'm sure you've seen, they're 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 taking kind of a twins approach, both Fox Sports North and and the Minnesota Wild, and they're going to have a rotation of color analysts this year and things like that. All that will be in a story. I don't totally disagree with you. Um, you know, uh, I I know the. Wild do want to? Uh, they don't want to make it Vegas, but they also want to bring energy into the building. And so we'll see. Opening night, there. I know a lot of people have been uh, really critical of them in the preseason that nothing has changed. They have been waiting purposely for opening night, October twelfth, against Pittsburgh to unveil what they're doing. I don't know what it is. Um, even if I did, I probably wouldn't unveil it because I do want it to be a surprise for the fans as well. Um, in terms of best game ops, I mean. I do love Vegas. I mean, I know a lot of people it's over the top for some Minnesotans, but my blood's New York, and I like New York, and uh, so I kind of, I like the show. I love the Vegas thing. I, I love the way it's done, the way they turn it into a sort of like a movie. Yeah. It, you know, the, I do think that the beginning, the whole stabbing thing on the ice has become a little corny and overdone, but, but they, they sort of... What they open with, they bring it, it's like a whole, you're watching a script, the whole show, uh, the whole game, um, and that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I think I should, <laughs> I just thought of something. Um, I, I, oh, I have an inside joke with Chad Graff, who writes for us, and I did this when he was with the Pioneer Press, too, is that, like, uh, is because I don't disagree with you with the game ops, is that anytime we're in a building and I, and I like the game ops, I just send him a direct message. I'm like, great game ops here in Chicago. Great game ops here in Florida. Great. I don't know. Yeah, sorry. Well, I, I, don't um, know, I don't know if I'm you got to be there, I guess. I don't um, know if I'm allowed to say this, but my favorite one was to see was the Devils. Really? Yeah. No, you're not allowed yeah. to say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if you're listening at home, we're talking to a priest right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. That was the, that's yeah. the joke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought he was a, here to get this show last rites, yeah. apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, I was going to say, I'll, I'll bless the water See, and the Zamboni if I want, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like Montreal a lot. Um, you know, tr- there's something special about Toronto, Chicago. Um, Colorado's gotten awesome. Uh, Vancouver is awesome. I mean, like I said, I don't disagree with you. No. L.A. is awesome. Um, Dallas is awesome. Um, Tampa is good. So everywhere uh, but here. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny because that's like ranchers. I mean, that, I love, I love, I, I am still one of those people and maybe this says something, too. I feel bad ripping on the wild. But I'm one of those people that, like, still to this day, I've cut, this is going to be my 25th NHL season, the l- 10 minutes before a game, I'm always in my seat because I just I am thoroughly entertained. I love the pregame warm-ups. I love the anthems. I love the announcements to the players. Like, I used to just love when they used to do it in New York uh, before the, the PA guy, I think, passed away. Um, loved Edmonton at Rexall Place. Loved that PA guy. Um, if everybody could turn off their uh, ringers, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's the soundtrack of your life. Yeah. Um, where in Minnesota, I do kind of take a walk. <laughs> so that was the, the, the joke. So I think that they do have to uh, fix it up. I don't disagree with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, appreciate it. I like San Jose, too. Um, yeah. This did also remind me of like my favorite ESPN commercial, uh-huh. which is the whoever the anchor standing there by the elevator. The elevator opens up and it's a New Jersey Devil, and the button's pointing down, and he goes, "No, I'll wait." I'll yeah, wait. you know. Also, as cynical sports writers, like, like I don't know if you feel this way, Jim, but but sometimes you kind of forget how lucky it is to kind of be on the road watching the team until you actually look down in warm-ups and you see the Wild fans that travel and them in their jerseys or on the yeah. glass and how excited they are to see their favorite team on the road. There. I yeah. Mean, um, and so that, that, that's kind of cool. Like, we, you know, there's still something cool like when you're walking around Nashville, which is, you know, the press box in the stands, so you're, you see Wild fans. And, and you see how many people come and travel. Denver is another one where Wild fans travel, Arizona. And um, 
And so sometimes it's like, you know, as, as somebody that's covered probably 2,500 NHL games, um, you know, you sometimes forget how cool it is to be on the road to see the team until you get, you see that 10 year old with his dad that's just so excited wearing a white wild sweater, uh, you know, in, in a, in a, in a, a way building, you know, it's, a, it's a, it's a trip. It's a vacation. It's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's fun. So, um, there is something cool to what you were just saying about, you know, 26 NHL buildings. I mean, I've been to 45 of them, 46. I listed them last year. Um, and, uh, it, or in the strip, I've been to like, I think 46 or 47 NHL buildings now. And, um, there's just something awesome about that. So, um, my first ever one was McNichols arena in Denver. What a pit. Oh my God. The, the, are- the press box was in the upper bowl end zone. So it was great looking down on your end, but on the other end, this is pre, like, you know, this is 90s, so, like, you don't have, like, the great TVs that we have now, um, you know, things like that. So, like, if you missed a goal on that side of the arena, whew, you better pretend you knew it, you know, you better ask around. I've told the story before, where I was in 1994, I think it was 94, I was covering, I covered the last exhibition World Cup game before the World Cup, USA versus Mexico at the Rose Bowl. And I'm in the press box. USA won one nothing. They scored in the first minute of the second uh, half, and I was in the bathroom. <laughs> and I have to write an 18-inch article for the Sun Sentinel. And uh, so I came back, and every single word that the reporter next to me described as the goal was in my story, so I hope it was right. <laughs> like, he told me exactly what happened, the way, you know, how the ball got there, and I'm like, <laughs> and I just prayed that he, that he was giving me accuracy. So This uh, segment brought to you by adultdiapers.com. <laughs> so. uh, I, one last note before we get to our next live question. You know, somebody Might have been 96, by the way. As someone who covers all the sports, I think one of the coolest things about hockey is the way the players burst onto the ice and just skate like crazy yeah. right before the, the, the uh, anthem. Well, it's, it's, you know, stuff. some other than, like I still remember to this day, I'm sorry to make you stand there with the mic, by the way, but, but you know, not to get like, you know, like the old romantic, uh, like think about my youth, but when I was a young sports writer, a teenager, you know, I mean, we're talking teenager. I was so, I started working at the Sun Sun at 15 years old. And anyway, I, I've told this story before, but I started covering where I, I, I mean, I grew up in Islander fan, moved to Florida, there's no hockey. There was this thing called the Sunshine Hockey League. Four teams in Lakeland, Daytona Beach, West Palm Beach, and Jacksonville. And I covered the West Palm Beach Blaze. The commissioner of the league was Bill Nyrup from Medina, Minnesota. The owner of the West Palm franchise was Bill Nyrup. The GM of the West Palm franchise was Bill Nyrup. And the coach of the West Palm franchise was Bill Nyrup. And so I used to cover every single game. I'd go there. I'd write 20-inch articles. It would get cut to, honestly, three inches in the, starch, in the Sun Sentinel. It was crazy. But I was relentless. I went there every single night to watch this. And what I loved every moment was at the beginning of the third period, so between the second intermission and the third period, as the players went on the ice at the old West Palm Beach Auditorium, pitch black in the arena, they played this, the, the, the Hell's Bells song. And that sound of the guys coming out to the ice with that dong, dong, you know, it was cool as, sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you Religious people can't hear that yeah, Thank you. I'll go to confession tomorrow. So. <laughs> yes, we... Thank or you we for, could kill wait. two birds with one stone, and you could just do it now. <laughs> thank so. you for waiting so patiently. Yeah. Michael is taking a breath. So Now's a good time to jump in. That's okay. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hey. Say, just following up on the Kasparov comments, um, Lou Nanny today had indicated that he thought Kasparov would be here next year for sure. Yeah. Are you that optimistic? Uh, yeah. Well, his contract ends this year. If he wants to play in the NHL, he, he has to come at some point, right? His contract ends. Billy Guerin is going there to talk to Kaprasov November 30th to December 3rd. I think I reported that the other day in a Q&A I did with him. And, um, and he wants to play. And, you know, for all these people that keep on tweeting, he'll never play for the Wild, he'll never play for the Wild... If he wants to play in the NHL, he has to play for the Wild. Like, I can promise you, unless it was some no-brainer for a superstar, I don't think Billy Guerin's first move as the Wild GM or one of his big moves is to trade the rights to the guy that Wild fans have been craving for since 2015. It's just, it's just not going to happen. 
So if Kirill Kaprasov wants to play in the NHL, it's got to be in Minnesota. Now, if 